So if we look at the subconscious bodyguards that are just manifesting in crisis and survival mode, this is the bit that will take a lot of labels off you. This is the piece that will take a lot of the pressure off you because what a lot of people get told is this negative manifestation of thoughts, feeling and behavior from anger and flashbacks and depression and anxiety. It's all, it's all negative. It's absolutely a positive because your subconscious bodyguards are doing their job. And if we look at the chart, where we've got the subconscious bodyguards on one side and how we pull them back to their true identity. That's what we're going to go through. Because the good news is there is no negative manifestation. There's only a survival manifestation that you're just trying to survive in crisis, subconsciously, automatically, or you have conscious control and you're making choices and decisions how you want to think, feel and behave. So we need to go from here back to here. But let's drill down and let's destroy the myth of all the negativity here. So look at the werewolf, the paranoid assassin, the ghost and the vampire. And in here, you'll see all these other labels that we're about to remove. So let's start with the werewolf. This is hyper arousal in the medical space. This is where the werewolf easily gets irritated, uh, irritated, then gets frustrated, then gets angry, then the rage comes out, and then the werewolf will attack. All right, that's its primary survival mechanism. Any sort of fear or any sort of pain or any sort of threat at all, it's coming forward with anger, rage, and violence. So, excuse my language, this is the language of the subconscious bodyguards. So, sorry mum, but if you've read my book, this is the language of the darkness. The werewolf is what the <laughs> teeth in and I'll kill you. Anything that happens, I'm coming forward. I'm gonna attack. You push me, I'll kill you. That's the werewolf. And if you get a full moon, you get a werewolf. And so, when people are reacting that way, it's like, oh my god, he, he's angry, or he's aggressive, he's a flipping psychopath. No, you're in crisis, and your subconscious bodyguard that is protecting you is the werewolf. That is not a true identity. That is a mask and armor protecting you. All right, you're not a psycho. But before we tell you what your true identity for the werewolf is, let's talk about the assassin. So the paranoid assassin is when you're on edge, all right? You have to sit with your back to a wall, preferably in the corner. You need to be able to see the exits and you don't let people close to you. You start being on guard and on edge so you can recognize danger to get a head start to get away. Right? You don't want contact with people, you want to be able to get away. You start withdrawing. And then if that crisis or that energy or that trauma is just too strong and you can't move forward that, through that consciously, subconsciously you're going to pull further and further back to the point where you'll get paranoid. Heartbreak in relationships because we withdraw. When my assassin starts coming out, I'm like, instead of getting angry and coming forward, I'm getting angry or I'm staying back. I'm withdrawing. But if you put me in a corner and you try and get to me, I'll hurt you and then I'll leave. So again, excuse my language. The werewolf is, I'll kill you and I'm coming forward. The assassin, leave me alone, I'll hurt you. And if you get too close, and gone. It's very, very hard, very, very difficult to help someone whose subconscious bodyguard is the assassin because as you go towards them, they want to stay away. So it's like two magnets on opposite polarities. But there's an easy fix to that, which we'll talk about later. So we've had the werewolf, we've had the assassin. Now let's talk about the ghost. The ghost manifests nightmares and flashbacks. The ghost lives in the past. The ghost will keep reminding you about the past. The past fear, the past pain, the past mistakes that you made. The ghost will use guilt, it will use shame, it will use regret. And it will take all that negativity from the past and put that in front of your future to keep you stuck in the middle. Why? It wants to keep you safe. Remember, it's still a subconscious bodyguard still trying to keep you safe. Remind you of everything that went wrong whether it was your fault, we'll try and blame you so that you don't do anything. And she will take all of that negative stuff from the past, chuck it in your future, which is called anxiety, and scare you if this is where you stuffed up, so don't go this way. That guy's gonna do the exact same thing in the future. This is what happened, reminder, 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 don't go there, reminder, 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 don't go there, right? Keep you stuck, keep you safe. And so in here we talk about anxiety. In here we talk about nightmares and flashbacks can't control, it's outside of your control. Why is she doing? She's popping up the past, freaking you out about the future to keep you safe in the middle. 
Now, I've had nightmares, I've had flashbacks, horrible, <laughs> all right? Horrible and terrifying, night terrors, sleep paralysis, all that sort of stuff is in the realm of the ghost. But it is not demonic, and it's not a negative when you understand the ghost's true identity. I don't want to devalue the trauma, I don't want to de devalue how scary this is. I'm thinking about these nightmares, these flashbacks, these feelings. My body temperature is increasing. <laughs> my palms are going sweaty, my heart rate's increasing. The fire in me is coming up, because I've just reminded myself of situations where I was in danger, so my body is now coming to protect me too. But I've got control of this. My conscious mind is still in control, so I can use all this energy and focus it. I can breathe and calm myself down, I can relax my body, and I can focus using this. Right? Conscious mind is in control. It wasn't back then. So when I was having nightmares and flashbacks thinking I was crazy, having nightmares about their kids, back when I was a cop. Now I understand it's the ghost trying to keep me safe, reminding me about the scary negative past so that it doesn't happen in the future. Dion, you dealt with all these dead kids as a police officer. Now you've got kids. They could be dead too. I'm going to wake you up at 3 o'clock every morning so you go and check on the kids so that they can't be dead. Make sense? All right. The ghost is not her true form. There's a mask and armor keeping you safe. Right? You're not crazy. Now let's talk about the last subconscious bodyguard. Let's talk about the vampire. The ghost comes back and freaks you out with nightmares and flashbacks. The paranoid assassin wants to keep you away from anything that can hurt you. And the werewolf will come out and go forward and attack to keep people away from you. The vampire latches onto your neck, removes your emotion. Removes your emotions so you can't be emotionally hurt. So the vampire is very lonely. If your subconscious bodyguard is the vampire to deal with your trauma, it's lonely. It's lonely in here. But lonely is safe because if it's just you, another person can't hurt you. And as the emotions start getting drawn out of you, you become very numb. If you can numb your emotions, if you can harden your heart, no one can hurt you. That's right. And so when all the feelings are drawn out, it will do that just as a way to protect your feelings. Or you might start hitting alcohol, you might start smoking the drugs, popping pills, using the needle to numb your feelings. And if you can numb it to the lowest point, the medical world will say that you're depressed. Boom. Right, you're flat, you're numb. And if you're totally numb, you don't care. That's the language you hear from a lot of vampires that I deal with. Dion, blah, 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 blah. And so what do you think? I don't care. Yeah, you do. But you've just shut down that ability to care. Why? It's armor to protect you. So it's not depression. It's not an illness. It's not a sickness. It is a survival mechanism to keep you safe. So that feels like a lot of weight, talking about the negative manifestations. And when I wrote about them in the book, they were the villains. But when you have conscious control of them, you'll find out that these pieces of yourself know you the most, and they love you dearly. And if you can understand these subconscious bodyguards, speak their language, you can get control of them again. And then they work for you again. Because I'll tell you what, really handy having a highly trained werewolf. If someone's trying to hurt me or my family. It's really good having an assassin on your team and a ghost and a vampire when they're working for you for the right reason. At the moment, they are out of control because they're scared for you. They're just trying to keep you safe. So what we're gonna do next is I'm gonna bring up a self-assessment chart. We can go through and you can start ticking. Where are you manifesting? So you can find out which one of these bodyguards you are. You can rename them if you want, but we keep the characteristics the same. And when we go through the self-assessment of what you are, that's the start point. Because it's natural, it's normal. They are trying to protect you. Not crazy, you don't have a disorder, you're in crisis, and all parts of your system are trying to keep you safe. That's all it is. So, let's go on to the self-assessment.